Okay, so now for our third example, uh, you actually already have the worksheet in front of you. So if you flip over the back, you have the this example and uh, the whole solution there. So I gave that to you so you can concentrate on paying attention to the steps that are necessary in this, okay? Uh, at some point, I'll ask you to maybe practice a few of the cross product things and do that off to the side just so you have the chance to practice it. But you, everything, all this whole note is right in front of you. So this is a very popular one. We could call this a classic uh, vector question. And it's finding the area of a triangle with these points. So this is, this is one of the advantages of algebraic vectors. We are going to draw a picture just to help us visualize the triangle, but it's not necessary for the solution. You, um, and it's just drawing a triangle, so it's nothing to stress about. So what we're going to do is actually draw this picture. So we're going to, and it doesn't matter really where these points are. I mean, they're three-dimensional points, so they could be anywhere. And see then that um, we've got a triangle here. Uh, let's just we'll use this, but we'll change it to blue. So there's that. And that of course is jumping around on me. And I'll cheat and make this dot really big. So it works perfectly. Okay, the the triangle doesn't have to be in this order. It can be however you want. So um, we're just doing it to give us that visual representation. Now, remember, and this is an important thing, these things here, P, Q, and R, are not vectors. They are points, okay? If they were vectors, they would have stuff in front of it like uh, like this, okay? That's a vector R. So, and there's an equal sign. This is not a vector. Plus, we like to use small letters for vectors, okay? So we wouldn't use the capital letters too often. And here you see that it's just R and then nothing next to it. So that means it's a point, okay? And we can't get those two confused. You can't do cross products of points. You can do cross products of vectors. So what we have here is a triangle of three points. What we need is we need vectors. And the reason we need vectors is because we're asked to find the area of this triangle. Now we have a formula for area of a triangle. Well, actually, we don't have an area formula for area of a triangle, but we do have a formula for area of a parallelogram. And remember, the area of a par parallelogram is u cross v. Well, a triangle is simply half of the parallelogram. Remember, that was on our test last unit. So if you just take half of that area, then you'll end up with the area of the triangle. It's a lot easier than trying to find the height and half base times height and all that sort of stuff. Just half a parallelogram. So what we need to do is define these vectors, these vectors u and v. So we have the points, but we need the vectors. So what we need then is vector u, and I'm just going to call this one u. I could have called a different one u, uh, and I'll call this one v. Vector u and vector v. Let's define those vectors. Well, vector u is the one that goes from point P to point Q. We can put a, uh, sorry, it goes from Q to P, excuse me. It goes from Q to P. Now I can put a vector over that. So it's the point from Q to P. Now if you recall from the first day of vectors, QP is found by taking P, point P minus point Q. You do the spot where you are minus where you began. So to add and subtract uh, points, 
to make vectors, we just simply add and subtract the x's, the y's, and the z's. So here, we're going to go p minus q. So you'll see that it's 3 minus 6 is minus 3, 2 minus 0, which is 2, and 1 minus minus 2 is 3. So we practiced that on the first day. We want to make sure we bring it up again here. So very quickly, we can also define v. v goes from q to r, which is r minus q. So I'm just going to subtract the, uh, the x's, the y's, and the z's. So two, negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 5 minus minus 2 is 7. And we end up with 8, negative, or sorry, negative 8, 1, and 6, 7. Now that I have these vectors, I want to take their cross product. So I know that the answer is on the sheet in front of you, but why don't you just take a second to do it on scrap paper or in your notes and actually do the cross product of these two vectors. So we'll ask the supply teacher to pause it while you actually do this on your own. The more practice, the better. As you're doing it, I'll do it quickly up here. One thing I forgot to mention last video or slide is at this stage, I really like to double check. I'm just going to go and make sure, okay, it's 2 times 7 is 14 minus 3, so 14 minus 3, yep. Okay, then the next one is a negative 24 minus a minus 21, so it's a plus, okay, negative 3. And then negative 3 minus minus 16, so it's plus 16, and I get that. It does not hurt to double check at that stage. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to try it yourself and check the answer here and in your handout. So now let's go and actually answer this question. So we need to find the area is one half this vector that we just found, which was 11, negative 3, 13. But remember, it's not just that vector, it's how big that vector is. So we need the magnitude of the vector 11, negative 3, 13. So again, from the first day, we remember that the magnitude can be found by doing the square root of the squares, is what I call it. So we go off and we take the square root of 11 squared, which is 121, plus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9, plus the square root, uh, or sorry, 13 squared is 169, 121 plus 9 plus 169 is 299. Square root of 299 is some decimal. Divided by 2 or multiply by 0.5. And we get an answer of 8.65 units squared. We don't have any meters or anything here, so we're just going to call it units squared. So recap. Write down the points. I like to draw the points so that I'd make sure I have proper vectors. Then take the create those vectors u and b by doing qp being p minus q and qr being r minus q. Get those two points. The cross product is the uh, is what you do down at the bottom. You get that cross product of 11, negative 3, and 13. We need the magnitude of that is the area of the parallelogram. So we take the square root of the squares, and then half of that gets us the area of the triangle. Now, 
that's it for the video lessons. If you'll notice, there is an example for on your worksheet, which I'll take up with you tomorrow. If you're done all the practice from today, you can look ahead at what that question is, where it asks you to find the unit vector perpendicular to both. But I'm going to save that for tomorrow, so there's no video lesson there. So at this point, I'd like you to practice. And you're going to practice page 147, number uh, 1, 4, and 6, I believe. Now, I could be wrong with that. Um, check with your supply teacher as I've written it down on the blue sheet. Okay, thanks very much. Hopefully things went well today.